Okay, you are to secure the central square. Be sure to equip your GF before you head into battle. Let's move out. Oh, boys and girls, welcome. I'm your host and guide, Chris13. And shit just got exciting. So, just quickly checking up everything here, okay. Now remember, we did just leave Kizdis behind, so... Gonna need to remove everything that she's got junctioned. We're also gonna need to switch it up with Squall and Zy... Squall and Zypher? Zell and Cypher. What the hell is going on in my head? So let's just start by removing everything, and I'll show you how I generally junction my team when I've got three people. Basically, I'm gonna have one person... Now, boss battles would be a bit different. I set up for boss battles specifically for each boss battle depending on what they do. But for just normal encounters, normally going through the game, I have one character that attacks that's going to be able to dish out damage. In this case, that's going to be Cypher. I have one character that's then good at drawing magic. So in this case, I'm probably going to make that Squall because, you see, he's got the highest magic stat other than Cypher, but we've already decided Cypher's our attacker with the highest strength. And then I have one character, my third one, I will give the card ability to. So if you take Quetzalcoatl, you've got card. Magic. Draw and card. Right, so he doesn't have any magic yet. Cypher, we're giving... We're gonna give... Um, yeah, we're giving Ifrit because he's got both the strength and the ability to junk them, junction elements to his attack. Which, in this area, really doesn't make much of a difference, but he's also got the strength plus 20 for an extra little added bonus. And Squall, actually, you know what? Because we only have the one character with the magic junction right now, I'm actually gonna change this up. None of the enemies in here can be card modified, so there is no point in trying. So there's no point in even having card equipped at this point in time. So we're actually going to give Squall Quetzalcoatl, and we'll make two attackers. Now if we want, we can actually switch up a bunch of his magics. Let's go exchange. You're not equipped with fire, so we'll give that to Cypher. Give all Blizzard, we'll give some of that to Zell, just that these guys have some. Thunder, we'll give that to Cypher. Uh, Sleeps, we'll give that to Zell. And then we'll go in here. Water Ice Magic, yeah, we're back in here. We want Water Crystals, let's fill up Zell so he learns a bunch of water. And we'll fill up Cypher. Anything else that I have right now, not really worthwhile. But that is a good way, I find, to just start this off. So now everyone has stuff they can junction. Auto for strength. And same thing with Cypher. Auto for strength. Alright, let's do this! Let's save the Dalit Dukedom! No point in talking to everyone else. We know what, our, what we have to do. We have to get to the central area. And then stand there. Woo. Exciting. Okay, but with my setup, basically I've now got the two attackers. Squall's job is going to be not to attack, but to keep loading up on magic. Cypher and Zell, on the other hand, are basically just going to be killing the enemies. So Squall's not going to be getting tons out of these battles, but throughout the course of the game, having one person who just keeps slowly bringing in magic stops me from having to grind. Right? And this is how I get away without doing it. I've now got enough magic that 
we have all our stats junctioned to, so we don't really need any more. So this will just help get all those other extra spells that I could use without having to be like burdened down by having to stop and be like, oh god, now I've got to really just grind forever and a day. And it still leaves me with two strong characters that are, look, they're just one-shotting everything. Oh, and Cypher, remember, he's got a gunblade, so it makes him just like Squall. Don't forget to pull the R1 trigger to make his, you know, attack even more powerful. Yay, level ups. And yeah, the reason why card won't work is because most of these enemies, well, they're not monsters, they're people. And for whatever reason, you can't turn people into cards, but you can turn monsters into cards. I guess, I don't know, maybe there's something special about monsters, like the fact that they came from the moon. But I guess people didn't come from the moon, so you can't turn them into cards. They don't have that innate ability. I guess it's also weird. Hey, look, there's a person over there. Bzzz, I turned you into a piece of paper. But if you want to look at it with that sort of, like, point of view, then it's just as weird to turn, you know, enemies into cards as well, because you're still turning a giant caterpillar into a piece of paper. Right? I don't know. It's like it should make sense, but at the same time, it doesn't. But whatever. Like I said before, gaining levels isn't going to kill us, it's just... It's preferred that we don't. Until certain points where you know you're gonna want to. One of the best strategies is actually at the very beginning of the game... To grind up to about level 40, and then to never gain pretty much any levels from there. Because at that point, you'll be able to start getting the, uh the best magics from the enemies at the beginning of the game, so you'll have the level 3 fire, the level 3 lightning, the level 3 cure, etc, etc. And they start dropping other better spells as well, like the bite bugs will have poison, or bio, or whatever they have that they get at the higher levels. But we've taken care of all the enemies, so let's, uh, well that's it, we're on standby till the enemy comes. As he says, we get to wait. Stand by. How boring. Yep. Stand by. Where we get to do nothing. There's nothing here. There's a dog. Wandering around. There's us wandering around. Oh, wait. Wait. What's that? Sounds like it's starting. Wait, no, that was us. Bring it on. Get out of here! Scram! Hey, Galbadian soldiers! What are you waiting for? Come show me what you got! <sighs> Exciting battle. Nothing. Yep. Oh, no, wait, this part we actually have to do something. Still wait, keeping us waiting. And yeah, just keep talking to Cypher here. That's it! I can't take it anymore! What is this? Some kind of dog training? Well, there is a dog there. Maybe you should train him. He seems better trained than you are. Shh, they're so sneaky and quiet. 
Look at them sneaking away. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Hey, what is that up there? Our next destination. But that's against orders. Weren't you just saying how bored you were? Squall! I stand by the captain's decision. Captain's decision? You want to wreck some havoc too, don't you? It's a good opportunity to test out my training. Thanks to you, I feel like I can take on anyone. Even if they do fight dirty. Like you. You'll thank me when the time comes. What the hell? I thought you guys didn't get along. We're like all buddy buddy now. Listen, this ain't no ordinary battle. It's an exam, an important one. I'm telling you, we have to stick to orders. Then you stay here. I don't need any Boy Scouts. What was that? Don't take him seriously, Zell. Cypher, if we're gonna go, let's hurry. The enemy is headed for the facility. We, Squad B, are to secure the summit. Move out! Alright. Fine. Alright, that's it. Breaking orders. Let's move out, guys. Let's go do something exciting. Something crazy. Let's break rank and get in shit. Think about it. Think about how much trouble we would actually get in if we tried pulling this in, like, an actual scenario where people were at war and we broke ranks like this to go off and do something else. What happens if they now start attacking through that area? There's no one covering it. You can say goodbye to your army. You're basically d uh, what the hell just happened? Well, that was weird. I think my screen just blew up. Ah, who, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? The Galbadian soldiers have entered the communication tower. On top of that, uh, the place has always been a nesting ground for monsters. Uh... Ooh, boss monster. Okay, what Cypher's telling us here is how experience works. Characters don't all get the same experience. Basically, there's a set amount for completing a battle. You, an enemy dies, everyone gets a set amount. Say that's a hundred. The person who actually kills the enemy will get a little bit more. And if you never attacked it once throughout the course of said battle, you actually then get a little bit less. So, Cypher here actually wants to be the person to get the final hit on this enemy so that he gets the added experience. Which, you know what, is totally fine by me because then it means slightly less experience for everyone else to get. Because, you know, I don't want to be gaining levels and all that sort of stuff. So, Squall and Zell can just sit here and kind of load up on magic while Cypher takes them out. If for some reason anyone starts going down, we can just, you know, quickly cure them up and get back in the game. Except for Cypher. I'm not going to worry too much about curing him. Actually, what I'm going to do is attack him. And I'm going to be using Squall for this, because he's actually got the least damage out of anybody. Ooh, whoa, what the hell? I don't think I've ever seen him cast that. 
Pretty sure I usually kill him before he has a chance to. But... Alright, this is what I wanted. His limit break. Cypher can actually cast his limit at a higher, like, HP tolerance than anyone else. Probably because... It's the only... He's, he's not a team player. He doesn't stick to your team. But, what the hell? While we've got a chance, let's show it off. And see, you can see the experience acquired. Squall and Zell each get 277. Cypher gets 317, so he gets an added amount. Just because he dealt the final blow. Woo! More abilities! Oh, not this one. This one. Remember, we don't want to accidentally start learning something we don't really want. So, that's elemental defense. We can dish out extra damage. Now, let's make sure we can handle it as well. Oh, come on. We gotta be close to the top here. This mountain can't be that big, can it? Can it? Oh no, it's not. The generator is up and running. No problem with the boosters. The hell they doing? Cable disconnection confirmed. Beginning exchange process. Roger. Uh, repairs? Who cares? This must be your first real battle. You scared? I don't know. I try not to think about it. I love battles. I fear nothing. The way I look at it, as long as you make it out of a battle alive, you're one step full. You're one step closer to fulfilling your dream. What? Your dream? You have one too, don't you? Sorry, but I'm gonna pass on that subject. Yo, let me in on it too. Mind your own business. Frickin' hell. What's the matter, Zell? Swatting flies? Damn you. Uh -huh. There you are. Like, are you, like, totally Squad B? Like, wait a minute. Like, you're the guy who showed me around, right? Thanks. I, like, don't get so lost anymore. Oh, yeah. I haven't told you my name yet. I'm, I'm like, a messenger. Name Selfie. I'm from, like, Squad A. Squad Captain Cypher, right? Like, where is he? One of these days, I'm gonna tell you about my romantic dream! <sighs> this sure is tough. Captain, like, wait up. What are you waiting for? Come on, come on! And with that, I hurry up and walk around the mountain. You can actually just jump down the same way she did, but that's kind of stupid and risky and stupid and risky. 
So I prefer not to, and instead I just make the jump, and literally jump down. No, I don't make the jump. Why would I say I just jump down? I clearly did not. I walked. Casually. Around. The outside. Uh huh. What took you so long? It would have been much quicker if you just jumped. Much quicker? Please. You wouldn't normally jump off a cliff, okay? Ain't that right, Squall? Yeah, I guess so. You wouldn't normally jump that. Hmm, I don't know. Well, anyway, let's get going. Has everyone equipped a Guardian Force? You haven't forgotten, have you? Um, no, I haven't. Seeing as how we've been using them this whole time, in all these battles. What do you think we are? Stupid? Are you stupid? Because I'm not stupid. Cowards! Hey! The captain's getting away! Did he go up? Hey! Squad B captain! Alright, so one thing I'm going to want to do here is actually switch up some of the junctions I got. Because we got a boss fight coming up. And any magic that Cypher happens to gain has been switched over. It has now been given to Selfie here, who basically takes his place. She doesn't have the same stats as him, however, so we are going to have to do some rejunctioning. Basically, I'm going to remove my magic here from Squall. I'm going to make him another physical character. So if we can just up his attack. And we can also up his health, and quite a lot too. You actually notice the difference here. Junction magic, see how much of a difference? Holy crap, that's 200 health, and that's not even a lot in comparison to what we can then get later. We are going to want to make sure that we have thunder on our elemental attack here, though, so I'm going to do a little bit of switching up and making sure that he's actually got 100 thunders. So let's uh, steal some from you, give them... Actually, you know what? We'll steal some from you, seeing as how you're not even in the battle anymore. Give them all. That should be good enough. And everybody's currently learning something. Okay. Mm. Nah, no, that'll be fine. Basically, also, before you fight a boss, you want to check anything that people are learning. If it looks like they're about to learn it, like if HB Junction was at 49 out of 50, I'd want to remove it and start on a different ability, just because bosses give you a lot of AP. So, if I only have two more to the next, till I learn it, and I'm going to get 10 from the battle, well, I've just wasted 8. But HP Junction should be fine. So we'll stick with that, and we'll save our game, and uh, next time we shall fight the boss. I shall see you guys then. Oh, remember, because it's a boss, there's no point in giving ourselves the card ability.